All right, boys and girls, we're back. Ah, welcome back to the Flight Like You Stole It's Engine Building Contest going on over here now. Uh, I've got just about everything squared away so far on this lower end here. I'm now going to, as one of these British maintenance manuals, I think it was, I read one day, uh, I'm going to offer this cylinder up to the engine here. Now, my engine man is real particular and real meticulous. He gives me my cylinders back with the pistons already in them. The reason being is because he's weighed and balanced the connecting rods and the pistons together where the crankshaft was balanced when it was out to the shop over there. So hopefully I'm going to have a really nicely dialed up little little engine here. Now this is cylinder number four is where he wants it. You can tell by the fact that he put those numbers right here on there. So that's where he wants this cylinder to go is number four on this in this assembly. I'm going to try to set this thing here up. And I'm going to try to uh, let you guys watch me stab this first cylinder, which will probably turn into being a, a total Charlie Fox. But, you know, what, what can I say? First things you got to remember, though, there's a couple of things that go on here. And I have done this once or twice in the, in the past. I won't lie to you. If anybody tells you they've built a bunch of engines and they never once forgot to put the O-ring on the base of the gas cylinder, I'm going to call them out on it because I don't think anybody I know has ever not as anybody I ever known has not done that once at least once so anyway there we go now there's a couple of other things we got to do here uh, because my pushrod tube housings are kind of look this is the seal for the pushrod tube housings so I'm gonna slip these on here also they go up here I'm gonna put a little Vaseline on the inside so they slide up here really nice but the bottom side of them fit over these little pieces right here this is where the pushrod tube comes down from the rocker arm assembly and uh, and engages in the lifter bodies that we just installed a minute ago. So, at any rate, let me get my little handy dandy Vaseline over here. Let me throw a couple of these little clips on here real quick because that's how this works. Those are little spring clamps that hold those on. Aren't they pretty? They just came back from CAD plating and they look dynamite. I'm gonna be excited the way this little engine looks. If it looks to make them fly, well, I'll be real excited because that means it'll go like a bat out of hell. Anyway, a little love juice over here on this thing. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it like that. Okay, nice and slippery. The reason being is because once you have this up on there, you're going to have to slide it back down and get it in proper position and then get the spring clamps on it. So you want it to lubricate and you want it to slide so that when it gets there, when you get it on there, you can get it positioned properly and hopefully you won't have any leaks now these pushrod tube assembly these pushrod tube housings on these things are press fit into these cylinders so it's real important uh, that you do not grab the cylinders by the pushrod tube housings here let me show you real quick see see how those pushrod tubes they, they just are press fit right up in there so there's no seals no nothing in there it's just a bead fit so it's real important you don't grab the cylinders by those pieces right there. Although I used to see guys carrying them around by those pushrod tube housings all the time. They're not supposed to do that. It's not right. But you can't teach the whole world to build an engine or play with an engine proper either. So uh, at this point in time in my life, you know what I did? <laughs> I just put one on here I had lubed up. Now you see what problems I would have if I had this on the cylinder up there? Put the wrong ones on there. Now how you like that? Now watch this. Ooh baby. Yeah, pop right in place, just like I wanted it to. A little Vaseline does wonders for this. Okay. Now if you give me a minute just to uh, get my knickknack stuff together here, uh, I'll try to set this GoPro up where you can see what I'm doing and we'll go from there. Alrighty now, <clears throat> I am just about ready to, as I said, offer this cylinder up here for this engine. Now I'm going to put a little love juice inside here so that my piston pin will slide easily in and out. Hopefully I won't have any problems fitting this piece up, this cylinder up on here. The piston is in the cylinder, and if the rings have been checked, they've been in gap, 
measured, cleared the whole nine yards. So now what I have to do is I'm going to take this cylinder, as you see it right now, and I'm going to rotate it sideways, hopefully drop this piston pin right down through here. It's all lubricated up, everything's all ready to go. Let's see if I can do this without knocking the engine over off the stand or whatever. But anyhow, here we go. Oh, talk on it. Look at that piston pin comes down before I can even get in there. Now just some light, slight bumps and taps. She should slide right on. Oh baby, look at that. Look at it. You go, girl. Yeah. Whoops. I want it going on like that. That's not good. Just a tap with the palm of my hand here. If I get down on the studs. how you stick a cylinder on an engine. But before we start celebrating, I'm going to get the nuts on there before the uh, before something happens and it pops right off of there. Again, the hardware's all been off to the, uh, to the CAD plating store. Threads have all been chased. Everything should go together just fine. Lickety split. these down. I'm not going to torque them just yet because I'm going to wait till I have all the cylinders on the engine and then it torques because you got some crew studs and crew bolts on here. But in order to accomplish this, you got these handy dandy little dog leg wrenches here that you use to put these together with. And this little engine has to be happens to be a half inch and a nine sixteenths. And so pick up the wrong one first, don't I? See how that works? That works real good so you get your torque values proper on your uh, cylinder. It's nuts. Which is an important feature. be a pretty little engine but I'm going to trash it out with my beat up old ugly baffling. Maybe I should uh, make bath, put baffling on my wish list for next annual or something. I don't know. Problem is when you get all this oil on your hands, it makes it tough. It makes it tough to screw nuts and hardware down on your uh, engine there. It's starting to look like an engine now, isn't it? It's probably about midnight on 
He's out of 22nd, I think. And at this point, I'm still planning on heading up to Oshkosh, which is just about an 800 mile flight for me. And I'm planning on leaving on Sunday. So I hope I get to see a lot of you folks up there. I know I have certainly had a lot of fun last year. It's been a few years since I've been. It's probably been seven or eight years since I've been, but I had a lot of fun. So now, I'm going to go ahead and continue to march with some more cylinder installations. And so now you see how that does. All right, I'll be back with you in a little bit. Adios.